Hey everybody, this is Desmond Ong here. So if you're watching this video, it's because you're part of our company, Chroma Beat Educations Database. You either come to one of our events before, or you have attended one of our seminars, workshops. Today I have a very, very special guest, and this person is amazing. Uh, he, I, I regard him as one of the highest, you know, top level media buyer, paid advertiser in the world. And it, for those of you who are watching, if you do not know what media buyer means, basically these are the people that go out there and flood the internet with their banners and ads and everywhere you see them. So this is something that I teach in my class as well. So uh, first thing first, uh, Fred, do you want to just introduce yourself a little bit? All right. So first of all, thank you for actually having me here, Desmond. And um, I obviously have been an e-commerce entrepreneur for almost 13 years now. Um, and I'll also obviously share my knowledge with a group of students who are absolutely crushing it in the world of e-commerce. So yes, I'm a media buyer and I actually say that media buying is my skill, but I still need to actually have a vehicle to actually take my skill set to apply it to, which I apply them all really into the world of e-commerce. So in short, simply an e-commerce entrepreneur. Okay, so uh, Fred, I know you're from Vancouver, just in case a lot of those people who are, don't, don't, you're in Vancouver right now, right? I just yep, want to make I sure. Am in Vancouver. Okay, so he's from Vancouver, and Vancouver has a ton of smart marketers, as we know. And Fred has done a lot. I've known Fred for a few years now, and he has done a lot in many, many different spaces of, uh, of segments of digital marketing, as well as making money online. He's done millions. How much are you spending a month right now on, on advertisement at the moment? Well, it really varies on what kind of business, right? We at least okay. spend at least six figures on ads. And whenever we do launch, we spend as high as like seven figures to really push a product out into the markets. Okay. So I just wanted the audience to know that, you know, Fred is not someone who spent $10 a day on Facebook and calls himself like a Facebook ad expert. This is a guy that really knows the game really well and is ahead of the times. And while a lot of people right now are still actually working on Facebook ads and tweaking Facebook ads. If you're from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, you should already know this, the fact that uh, our ad cost in this particular city has actually doubled in the past 12 months, right? Um, so a lot more people, a lot more marketers like myself have actually started looking towards other alternatives. We're talking like YouTube ads, and uh, I know Fred is an expert at YouTube ads. Fred, do you wanna like just go ahead and maybe talk a little bit about like what as a newbie, someone who's brand new, maybe someone who's spending a few thousand dollars a month on Facebook ads, but they see that their cost per lead or the cost per click is going up. They want to move to another platform because their margin is getting hit because especially some of them are selling physical products or they have a retail store, right? So they want to move to, let's say, YouTube ads. Can you like just give simple tips? What are the first things they have to do? Well, first of all, I wanted to actually make a clarification on one thing first. Yes, Facebook ads have been more expensive. There are Basically, the CPM is actually getting more expensive. That means that there are more advertisers and less ad spot for Facebook to actually serve. So it creates an auction and actually have that at play. However, though, yes, despite the fact that right now Facebook ads have been more expensive, but the conversion rate actually has gotten better. So a lot of times, yes, you can say that, oh, people are saying, oh, e-commerce is saturated, physical product is saturated, Facebook ads is actually getting more expensive. Yes, in a way, but you can actually use it as a leverage point. So I actually want to get that piece of information out there first because there's too many misconceptions out there at the same time. There's a lot of things that as a digital marketer that you can do to actually get better results. For example, increasing your average order value, having better creative to get a higher click through rate, but we're not actually having that topic right now. You're asking me, well, if I am already spending on Facebook ads, how can I really take what I've been doing to actually apply it to another traffic source? So you can actually use YouTube. Now, when it comes to YouTube, one of the key fundamentals is that it's got to be an enticing video. And as everyone know right now, majority of the placement on Facebook is actually video placement. So people that runs a video ad obviously have a bigger, um, um, have more reach than running an image ad and running a carousel ad, not saying that they don't work, they still work, but it's just that more people are running a video ad. Now, when you go into Facebook and you actually got a video ad to really work, you can actually take that exact same video and go into YouTube and test the demographic and also test the topic of who will most likely actually respond to your ad that you have. Now, obviously there are going to be some changes that you need to actually have in your Facebook video ad versus your YouTube ad because first of all, there are two completely different segment of audience that you are reaching. And the other thing about YouTube is that you've got to narrow down your demographic even further. So when it comes to YouTube, 
they're like, I have to say it right now, they, I know that for a fact that they are working towards <clears throat> making their pixel more smart, but they're not there yet. Facebook is still ahead of the game when it comes to pixel. So when you start running a Facebook ad, Facebook will know, okay, the male at 25 to 34 is actually converting better and they will allocate more budget towards those particular demographic. But when it comes to YouTube, it's actually not. YouTube is so big, you would actually have to do a lot of micromanaging when you're going into the market. So let's say that you want to sell, I don't know, let's say that you want to sell a fishing gear, okay? Um, a fishing product in your store that you want to get out in the market. And when it comes to Facebook ads, it's working phenomenally well. When that happens, then yeah, you can bring it to YouTube and start with a very small budget and really go after the topic because you don't have pixel data right out of the gate. And when it comes to YouTube, their topic is actually done up really, really, really well. So basically go into YouTube with a mindset of you're starting brand new. And yes, you already found a product that works. However, you still need to actually start fresh on YouTube. And you don't need to actually have a lot of money to actually spend on YouTube, $5, $10. And the scalability on YouTube is going to be far easier than Facebook because people are like, well, when I raise my bid on Facebook, it resets the algorithm. It does all these things are working all of a sudden die. YouTube is different. If you're getting some great results right out of the bat and you're increasing your budget, then obviously at that point, your, your sales will obviously come at the same time. So it's more steady. But again, when YouTube, you got to really look at how to optimize it. One key thing, especially in the Google platform, not just YouTube, is optimization. You want to actually see where your ads are being shown and really eliminate placements that are not producing you results, that are getting you a lot of views, that are basically getting you um, a lot of clicks, but people are not buying, then you want to basically start adding exclusions on YouTube. So in reality, when it comes to Google ads and YouTube, it's more like you going out fishing, right? There's two kinds of people. One is like you have a fishing rod and you aim for that one fish, hoping for that one fish to actually come. That's how Facebook is right now, right? They know which fish will most likely eat the worm or eat whatever that is on the hook. Now, when it comes to YouTube, you gotta basically look at it from a different perspective. You're literally casting out a wide net. And from there, you are slowly taking out the trash, the things from the net to really just reap in the reward. So in a nutshell, you wanna look at YouTube at that way um, and always start a topic first. That, those are really amazing tips, really great tips. I want to talk about exclusion a little bit because a lot of people, uh, when they are buying ads online, they don't like to exclude people. They don't like to exclude certain type of people. They're not converting. Hence, they're paying over, over like, way too much. Even on Facebook, for those of you who are watching this, you should know that you can exclude through custom audience, some lookalike audiences, and you can do a lot with that. So that's a really, really good tip, especially when you talk about you know, advertising on YouTube. It's like putting out a net and excluding things things are not converting well which is fantastic um which which is great because a lot of the people watching this they are people who are getting started with uh, advertising online maybe they're selling uh, a product on the shopify store maybe they're doing print on demand some of them are doing a uh, digital product launches in a mini scale some of them are doing webinars so there's a lot of different kind of people are watching this right and uh would you suggest for them to allocate their budget 50-50 on YouTube and Facebook at this particular predicament at this time because we know there's a lot of changes coming in. We just hear the news today. Um, they're changing relevant score again with on Facebook, right? They're putting it in the three mini categories. Um, would, they, would you suggest for someone who's brand new, maybe spending a few thousand dollars a month, putting 50% of their budget on Facebook, 50 on YouTube, or how would you do it? How would you would advise them to do it? I would do 80-20. 80-20, especially if you're in the world of e-commerce and direct response, 80-20 is going to be a lot better because you got to keep in mind, YouTube is not built for direct response. Right. You, uh, Facebook is built for direct response because when you tell Facebook, hey, Facebook, right now I'm advertising right now and at the campaign level, you get to choose the objective, right? You get to choose the conversion objective on even more narrowing down <clears throat> into what specific uh, objective you want. You want a sale of a specific product, you want a uh, sale or you want to get a webinar lead or you want to get an opt-in. Now one thing about the conversion though, which is very important, do not optimize your ads off of the standard event. Never do that. Especially if you're running an e-commerce store or if you have like a sale, uh, a, a brand that have multiple lead magnets or multiple webinars from different angles, you always want to actually go specific. So let's say that you're selling the fishing rod, for example. You want to create a custom conversion off of the fishing rod so that Facebook optimizes just for your fishing rod. 
So now, again, I'm telling you these because Facebook is still built for direct response. Yes, CPM is more expensive, so cost per click is going up, but conversion rate is also going to be your ROAS and your um, conversion is actually going to be better. Now, 20% allocation goes to YouTube is because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. And as a marketer, here's one challenge that we will face. We only have 24 hours in a day and your working time, if, you, if you're a hustler and you work your ass off, you may work like 10 hours a day. But how are you going to effectively allocate your time and efforts and really get the maximum return is the most important thing. So you don't want, if you do 50-50, I mean, that's fine. It's up to you because we do 50-50, but it requires a lot more attention because now you're not focusing, you're not spending money on just one platform. You're spending on two. So right out of the gate, YouTube is more complex than Facebook. Now, again, YouTube is a big market. Once you actually are able to narrow YouTube down, the scalability is, I can say it's pretty much indefinite. Like you are not going to get exhaustion in traffic or audience saturation. But at the same time, if you're just spending a couple thousand dollars a month, you want to really focus your time on where are you going to make the most bank. And you want to basically allocate 20% of your time to test different things, to research different things, to get data. Where your 80% going on Facebook is actually producing you the result that you need that can fuel into your YouTube ads. Now, obviously, once your YouTube ads got locked down, once you got how it works, then obviously going 50-50 is going to be fine. So that's what I would do. Um, and if I were to recommend any newbies or anyone that's starting or only have a couple thousand dollars a month on advertising, 80-20 is, I think, is the most ideal number. I think that's a really good tip because I, I believe that Facebook is very powerful when it comes to getting sales, getting leads, people that you want to buy your stuff. But I think YouTube at this moment is very powerful when it comes to lifting up your brand, using them as a retargeting method to, to retarget people who didn't buy the first time when they found out through Facebook, which is amazing. So that's really, really important. And uh, talking about Facebook. Well, that's, ads, echo on yeah. top of what you say, what we do a lot is that we do leverage a lot of our efforts of, of Facebook on YouTube too. And you had a bang on right there, which I missed. You can get cold traffic from Facebook a lot easier than YouTube. Now, what you, you want to use on YouTube, why the 20% budget really comes in place is the retargeting. Like once the person starts to interact with your company or into your brand or into your products, and if wherever they go, they see you, especially even on YouTube ad, yes, you're right. It definitely increase your brand present because not a lot of people are advertising on YouTube. And most importantly, you are able to actually then only advertise to those that are considered warm traffic and not cold traffic. So yeah, you got to bang on. That is, that is so powerful because uh, I believe in 2019, especially with the rising ad costs, you no longer can run an ad where you're just trying to build a list. You're just trying to, you know, pump traffic to a webinar. I think branding plays a very important role this year compared to last year. Like the way people are going to choose whether to buy from you or buy from your store is how much trust is gained before they even click on the store. Like, for example, if I see a, uh, uh, you know, if I see a book, like Fred is launching a book. If I see him advertising it on Facebook, I'm going to click on it because I know it's Fred. But if I don't know Fred personally and the ad just comes to me the first time, I'm going to be like, not a book really? Because there's just so many webinars. There's just so many stores. Like for me, my Facebook timeline is flooded with e-commerce products that are similar that you can find on AliExpress. Uh, it's flooded with webinars upon webinars and they're all selling the same thing and the pitch is the same. The webinar landing page looks the same. Everything looks the same. So how do you differentiate yourself? Branding is what matters. And that's why I want to talk about branding a little bit because I know you're very good at that. You're using social media to build a brand because not a lot of people are doing this. A lot of people are building brand using typical PR method, going on newspaper, going on magazine, radio. But that's old school. Let's talk about new school, right? Let's talk about what you would do if you have to brand yourself again from scratch using social media. Well, what I do? Yeah. YouTube. YouTube and Instagram. There's no doubt about it. Um, and what the terminology and where you're really going at with branding is it actually started really, really massive as of, I would say in the middle of 2018, um, the new terminology is called omnipresent, right? But if you actually look at this from an advertising standpoint, back into the traditional world, um, if you guys, obviously I, I never took a class in advertising, but it's just that through my experience, through my knowledge, I know, and a lot of studies, studies show that, an ad needs to be saw more than seven times in order for a person to even take action. 
Now we're so blessed with the digital age right now with advertising on Facebook and we get direct response right away. But as you grow and as you, as there are more noise in the markets, it's whoever has the most omnipresent or have the most eyeball to the potential customer or potential clients will win. So let's say that if you saw my ad on Facebook, you're like, who the fuck is this guy, right? I don't know who he is. Then all of a sudden you start seeing this person on Instagram posting every day. You saw him on YouTube giving you content every single week. You subscribe to his email list and getting emails. You may have been in their messenger. They actually get chat bots and all this other stuff. When those actually all work together, then what will happen, it will create the trust and authority. It will be like, okay, this guy already have tons of content on the social media. I would basically, I can't imagine what else he would have inside the course. Or basically, um, these people are running a physical, uh, physical, physical product. They're like, well, they got to know their stuff in order for them to actually provide so much content. And here's one rule of thumb, and actually one, not rule of thumb, um, here's a big myth which now is actually turning into reality. And I thought that this was really um, just a theory back then, but now it's actually proven, especially for Facebook. So a lot of people, we all know, CPM is rising. Everyone's like, how am I able to actually decrease my CPM? How am I able to actually get a lower at cost of advertising on Facebook? It's not gonna actually sustain my brand if it continues to grow. One thing that you need to know is that if you play within the Facebook ecosystem and Facebook is actually called a newsfeed. Now, newsfeed means that people want to consume content on Facebook. Now, if your brand only solely focus on running ads and you are not providing the main core of Facebook or even Instagram, which is content then you're going to get penalized. Facebook will be like, oh, you're just a typical advertiser. We're going to basically charge you what we normally charge people. However, if you start to produce content and have omnipresence and really being in market to give value first, Facebook actually rewards you that because people can see that they want it to actually, well, your users or people on Facebook actually want to consume your content and it feeds the ecosystem of Facebook. Hence, it will reward you with actually a lower CPM. So again, you do need to have like all the social media presence that you need. You need to provide content out there, regardless of what niche you're in, regardless of what physical product you have, you can still talk about some stuff. Like if you are in the um, trending gadget, you can do like unboxing videos, which it sells really well, right? You, if you're in, let's say camping or outdoors, you can give away tips on how you can actually uh, help that person have a better experience in the camping and throughout time it builds your brand it builds your authority and even if you sell the same product as xyz store that is just right beside you people would rather buy from you because they have been consuming so much content from you so in short yeah focus on organic reach like this is very important right now especially building your brand building your persona um, and building a store's name etc cetera, etc cetera, especially going into 2019 yeah, so this is really powerful because a lot of people, the mindset is, especially new business owners or new marketers online, their mindset is, I'm going to put an ad online, I'm going to pay Facebook $5,000 and Facebook is going to give me like 500 leads. But the game has changed so much today. Like you have to really push out content. If I own a dog training company, let's say if I want to, what I do is I sell dog training services. What I need to do is put out dog videos, maybe tips on how to care about dogs, tips for puppies, right? Put it out there and promote those videos really, really hard, right? And what you want to do is you want to retarget them with ads. That's how you would do it. Because too many people, what they're trying to do with their ads is first thing they want to they want to ask the people who are on Facebook browsing to do is to either opt in or buy something. That's like you going to a store, the moment you enter the door, the, someone just comes to you with a credit card machine or with a cashier and be like, hey, you know, I, I want you to buy something. That's crazy, right? So you want to actually build an experience, what I call social media experience for people as well who are on Facebook. Otherwise, your relevance score is going to dip and more importantly, your, your cost is going to go up. So talking about cost, you know, this is a very interesting topic because a lot of the people who are watching this, they probably have already started running some ads. Um, cost is going up. So let's talk about costing because I know you're a master at this. Like you're one of the best of the best in this particular field. So when it comes to cost control, for a normal business, I'm, I'm not talking about internet-based businesses, I'm talking about a normal business, maybe a restaurant, maybe a, a hair salon, maybe a, a massage or whatever it is, right? 
how would you do a cost control for in terms of let's say the cost per lead? What would you do for what would you recommend them to do? For example, let's say they're often paying 15 bucks per lead, and then now suddenly for some reason, maybe it's Chinese New Year, maybe it's a Valentine's Day, and it went up to thirty dollars a lead. What would you recommend them to do? Besides the uh, content and stuff, which which is amazing, which will help, but what else would you tell them to do? Creative upgrade. Okay. That's the one question. Like that's the answer, like creative upgrade. If you're able, you have to understand this, regardless of what is happening with the CPM, whoever has the highest click through rate will always win. Mm -hmm. So that said, if you constantly pump out new creatives from different angles, you basically have a competitive advantage. So let me give you a quick example, right? Um, let's say that, imagine this crystal uh, apple is a real apple, okay? So when you go in markets, selling an apple, there are so many angles that you can actually go after. You can basically say, this apple can help you lose weight. Now, obviously this will get you in trouble on Facebook ad, but I'm just using a simple, simple uh, analogy. This apple can help you lose weight or this apple gives you all the vitamins you need. Now that's already two different angles. Another angle is like this apple is uh, actually uh, GMO free. It's uh, totally organic. And that's another angle going after the different market. Selling a product can come up with several angles that you can go. Now, whichever one that actually produced the higher click through rate will always win. So regardless if you're, you're in a restaurant business, you're in a salon, or you in like spa or whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as you are able to actually find that message to your audience that basically reach the bigger masses and it tells you through click through rate. So you constantly need to challenge yourself on okay, how can I increase my click through rate? What is something that is people are very interested in? Because if you and I both own a salon and you're, and we pay about, we pay around the same price. So you and I are going to advertise to the same audience. And let's say that our CPM is going to be $30 each, but I'm able to take you out. If my CTR is actually going to be 50% higher than you, I'm going to hijack all the traffic. So I will take you out. And I don't care if the CPM is going to be more expensive because then my cost per click and my cost per lead is actually going to be far less than yours. And eventually you will give up. Mm -hmm. So you need to basically always look at how are you or how can I sell this product from a different angle that can produce me a higher click through rate, which will result in the lower cost per click and to the lower cost per lead. Now, another thing that you need to keep in mind now that's on Facebook side, right? That's on advertising side. And, we cannot control CPM. That's really determined by the auction, determined by Facebook, determined by the number of advertisers. The other thing that any businesses can do is to increase the on-site conversion. So if you're obviously running an e-commerce store, you want to increase your average order value. The same other store can sell the same product as you, but if you are able to actually get a higher average order value, that will allow you to actually take out your competitors a lot easier. The other thing, for example, you're running a local business is, all right, how can I basically get this person to buy a bigger package of like a spa package or basically come in and have a family dinner of four? So you want to basically create things or create promotions that will get you the highest, obviously, conversion on your website and the highest average order value for every single customer. And that will obviously help you fight with the rising costs of advertising. So two, two things that you can do. I, I, like, I like what you say about creative upgrade. In fact, a lot of people, what they're doing is that when they're running ad, and even if they're doing well with that ad, you still got to switch it up because there's something called ad fatigue. People are going to get tired of your ad. But here's the thing, you know, a lot of people, especially here in this part of the world, they always ask me, hey, you know, Desmond, you know, you say it's easy, you know, thinking about new creative, making videos, you're natural. But how would someone like us where we have not, not much ideas for ads, what should we do? What can we do right now to get more creative inputs into our brain so that we can come up with more creative outputs for our ads? Like what do you do, Fred, with your team, with yourself? If you run out of ideas or you just go through one of those days where you just like completely have no idea what you want to do for your ad, what would you do to get brand new ideas? Well, here's the reality though. You can actually use the same hook and angle, but just word it differently. That already makes a significant difference. Um, the videos, you don't have to be on camera all the time. You can basically use what we call thumb stopping ad and turn images into videos. Um, that obviously changed things up. As long as you are changing things up 
and it's not the same thing. You can sell the same thing, same angle, but how you word it is the most important thing. Now, another thing to keep, really keep in perspective is, let's say that if you're like, well, I completely am out of ideas of what is working or for example, um, what angle I should go after. One thing that we do a lot is that we look at our customer's review or we even look at our Facebook ad comments because you will actually see some of your customers actually commenting and giving you ideas that you never had thought of. So for our e-commerce business, like we look at our comments and our reviews a lot. And when we found that someone or a group of people keeps repeating that same thing over and over and over again, we turn that into an ad right away. And that already give us another creative updates. Wow. So you don't, yeah, listen to your customers. You don't have to always be the person that comes up with the idea. You can ask your customer, survey them, maybe ask them why they bought the product and that will actually give you a lot of information. So never assume, right? Like talk to your customer. They're the best people or look at what they say and they're the best place for you to actually update your creative and find different hooks and angles. I always say, Fred, you know, your customers are your best salespeople because what you need to do is if you're selling them as a haircut, once they're done with the haircut, all you need to do is just take out your camera and say, hey, can you like say something to help me sell my business? Or help me get more people to come into my business. And they're going to talk about how amazing you are. You post that up on Facebook. That's a new creative right there, right then, right? So creative is amazing. That, I, I learned a lot just from, from listening to you on, in regards to that. So this is very, very high level stuff. Let's talk about basic stuff, like people who are just getting started, like people who are thinking about starting an online business, but there's so many distractions. We're talking about, there's this guy here who's teaching about agency business. There's this guy here teaching about, you know, just doing social media ads for, for someone else. And then there's, there's this guy teaching about e-commerce and then Amazon FBA. There's just so many options. Now they're getting confused because there's just so many shiny objects, right? So for someone who's brand new, not a lot of money, maybe they have like, they want to put in $500 into this online business they're starting out. What would you recommend them to do? I would say with a shadow of does e-commerce because you get the control. You don't really need a significant amount of money up front and you can learn as you go. So I'm not bashing other courses. Like all the other, like FBA works really well. Agency worked really well. Social media agency works really well too. But if you were to ask me, I would say e-commerce only because you are not going to need to report to anyone, right? Social media and agency is great. You're going to be making a flat monthly recurring income from your client, but then you got to deliver results to them. And if they don't deliver results to them, you got to deal with human beings. And that obviously is going to be a catastrophe. Um, Amazon FBA is great. There's a lot of people that makes a lot of money at Amazon FBA, but the risk is a little bit high because you got to buy an inventory. You got to hope that when you have the inventory and it goes into FBA, it will work. $500 will not give you a lot of inventory, just give you a heads up. And that doesn't include cost of advertising as well. So when it comes to like you have a limited budget and you really want to get started and actually gain momentum, I would say e-commerce is the easiest because e-commerce can actually get you your first sale so much quicker than any other business model. And when you got that first sale, you will start to believe in yourself and you will have a shift in your mind. Every single business model that has been taught out there works. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work, but the tipping point for a newbie is basically staying focused on one business model and seeing the first sale because that will prove the concept and that will prove that you are capable and you can do it. And when you actually have that, then you will actually start gaining momentum and simply just continue to grow and go from there. So again, you can choose e-commerce, FBA, digital publishing, affiliate marketing, agency. It doesn't matter what you choose. But where I challenge you to do is that if you decide to go whatever business model you want to go after, stick with it. Mm -hmm. Don't shift halfway because then you're going to waste a lot of time and you're going to basically not really produce the result that you wanted and getting you that first sale is going to be prolonged and that will obviously affect you and destroy you because all you're seeing is like, Oh, none of these business model work. This is a scam. And that's why like you guys set up yourself for failing because you're trying to do this, that, 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 that at the same time. So again, focus at one at a time. And if you ask my recommendation, obviously it's e-commerce. Okay. That's amazing because I, I know a lot of people are doing very well in e-commerce and not only that, E-commerce is the type of business where you can genuinely exit out of your business. Basically, you can sell your entire store away. If you want, like, 
uh, you know, touch wood, something happened to you, something happened to your family, you needed that big cash. You can literally put it up on a website and, and, and sell it away. And sometimes people pay you five figures. I met someone at Final Hacking Life. One person was telling me that he sold his store for 200K and he's on a one year whole vacation and he's going to come back to business uh, next year, which is insane. So this is what we're talking about, real legit business, but do it in a way that, you know, Fred was just mentioning about building up confidence, getting your first sale. There's so many people that they, they dream too big, which is nothing wrong, but you can set yourself towards failure if you do not know what you're doing. Because that first sale, even if you only make a dollar for that first sale, that's going to push you and, and give you that belief and really believe in that. And let's talk more about that because I know you write a book about how to start an e-commerce store and yep. you have a strategy that like you're one of the best of the best. So let's talk about the book and also talk about what you're going to cover in the book. And more importantly, I want you to review the price for the book at the end because Oh, oh, there you are in your back. I think, I think we're disconnected. Okay, let me, it's still recording, so that's good. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Okay, so Fred, yeah. you have a brand new book that you're coming up with, and this is a book called Starting From Zero, right? I'm assuming this is a fantastic book for people who are just getting started, wanting to know exactly how they can, you know, get that first sale, get the second sale, maybe that 1,000 sale. And you're doing it through the e-commerce method, which is a, a method that has been scrutinized a lot recently because of how popular it is, right? But there's a reason why, because... It works, right? That's, if there's a lot of people talking about it, that means it works. But let's talk about this for real because I want to know, I want you to cover what's in the book, why did you get the book, and more importantly, at the end, talk about the, the investment they need to get the book because it's mind-blowing. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. So first of all, this book is actually called Starting From Zero, and the title says it for self, right? We want it to basically, I want this book to actually get in hands of individuals who really want it to like, have no experience, no tech experience, and literally start from zero. So that's why it's called starting from zero. Now, this book is actually the second edition. I had the first edition out. It was never published. It was really given out as an ebook. But we are officially going to the publication of this book, and we're going to be selling this physical copy of this book very, very soon. But before we do that, um, we're obviously going to be doing some crazy stuff with this book. Now, in this book, I basically journeyed back. 13 years on my e-commerce entrepreneurship on how I got into e-commerce and what are the things that really helped me become who I am today. And most importantly, um, this book actually helped a lot of my students uh, in just like over two years have generated over $31 million in sales. And it's all because of this book. So the refined version of this book is basically now that all the students have gone through it, I basically look at what is it that I can share more that can allow them to have like a system, a blueprint and strategy and practical steps that they can actually start building a business starting from zero. So in this book, I talk about the five step system and the five steps is super critical when you're building an e-commerce store. And a lot of people simply just stop at step number three, which obviously they just build a store, find products and sell. But in reality, that is not a sustainable business. You need to actually have the profit multiplier in place and you need to learn how to scale up and rinse and repeat, which is the most critical part. Now, my first business collapsed in 2008 and it was actually doing 4.6 million in four months, but it collapsed only because we only had the three steps. We didn't even go through the entire five step. And from obviously my failures and what happened back then, I documented to really see how I got back out of it and what I've learned through that failure to really develop my five-step system that really allow people, individuals like you who don't have any knowledge to actually get started. So in this book, we talk about step-by-step -step on building your store, finding products. We even show exactly how you should set up your Facebook ad, like step-by-step -step and why we click on certain things so that you're educated as a media buyer. You don't want to just be told what to do. You need to learn why it's done that way so that when any modification happens in any advertising platform, you will know and you have that knowledge to do so. Then we share things like how you can increase your average order value, how you actually multiply your business by diversification, how you set up your targeting ads. So it's literally like a Bible, um, a complete guide on walking people through on how to build a business. Now, the best part of this, 
Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are in the Asian culture. You guys would have heard of his name. Um, the foreword of this book is actually written by Mr. Robert Kiyosaki, the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, he heard of my story. He read the book and he absolutely loved it. And I obviously asked if he can write the forward for the book. And he, with a shadow of doubt, said yes right away. And I was really floored and really excited about it. So this book is not just a typical book. Like it just gives you the psychology. It gives you the blueprint. It gives you everything that you need to get started. And it will show you how you can even have an e-commerce business up for less than a hundred dollars and giving you all the steps that you need to actually have that accomplish. So um, I'm very excited to finally publish this book. And again, when we publish this book, it will be sold for a significant amount of money, just like any regular book. But for a very limited time, we're actually going to be giving away the audio version and the digital version of this book for $1.99. Like I want to get as many people hand on to this book as possible, the audio version and the digital copy so that it can get anyone. There's no more excuses for like, oh, I got to spend $20 on a book. Like, no, you're spending $1.99 and you got the entire blueprint system for you to actually start building an e-commerce business. I just had a um, student of mine that basically said to me that she went from zero to $700,000 in three months, all because she started with the book. And this is the potential and the opportunity that's in front of you. Now you might be thinking, well, Fred, e-commerce is saturated. Um, a lot of people are doing this. There's no money to be made. And the truth is, it's not. Because if you actually look at the statistics right now, e-commerce by 2021, it is projected to double in transaction. So that means that the market is gonna double in size in literally just two years time. So if you are basically believing that the market is saturated, then guess what? You're gonna just miss the trend. You're gonna miss the opportunity that is right in front of you. And well, a lot of I people- I wanna add about that, Fred, because yeah. I wanna add that because you, you mentioned a really amazing point that there's a big news recently that's just been released. Elon Musk is closing down all his Tesla stores. And if you wanna buy a Tesla car, you have to buy online right now. And e-commerce is only bound to grow further and further and further and further because like people that, like you and me, we are just so used to buying products online. I, I'm so used to getting Amazon Prime. Like I, I don't even know what to like to walk into a Walmart or walk into a, you know, uh, Target. I can't even remember. See, I can't even, I can't even remember going to a Target, browsing for like 30 minutes and then walking out into the cash. I don't even remember what that felt like. People are buying stuff online and it's, it's inevitable, right? Sorry to cut you off there, continue. No worries. Yeah, and, and on top of that, to, to, to voice that a little bit, you got to keep in mind one thing there are new products that are being made every single day, mm. right? So yeah, it may, you're not going to see the same kitchen gadget, fishing mm. product, camping product, homeware product as of like three months from now, like three months after you're going to see completely different market because a lot of these manufacturers, a lot of these uh, products, they, they're, they continue to innovate, right? And you just continue to sell. It's kind of like BMW. Okay. Easy example. BMW always have to come up with new models. Why? It's still a car, but the thing is that people are still going to continue to buy. People continue to buy. And the more people buy, the more people spend online, the bigger opportunity there are. So there's no such thing as saturation, in all honesty. Like there can be 100, 200. Let's, let's take this for example. If you think that e-commerce or selling physical product is saturated, then I can tell you, Every single Walmart, Target, CVS, and Wall Street are going to basically be out of business now. They're selling the same thing. Mm -hmm. Is it saturated? No, there's still a mom and pop shop down the road that is selling the same amenities as anything else. It's just a mindset thing that you got to get out of. It doesn't matter what is happening in the market. It doesn't matter who is selling the product. All it matters is basically the data that you are receiving for your store and through your ads if you are able to actually make a profit or not. And again, inside this book, I shared a lot about psychology and data that you need to read, which a lot of people are too emotionally attached to their product and to their store. And they never listen to the data. And that's why a lot of people, when they go in market, they're like, I tried e-commerce, it didn't work. Yeah, you try e-commerce, it didn't work because you may not be selling the right product. You don't know who your customers are. You're not using the data to help you optimize your business to tell you what you need to do. But again, I explained that all inside this book so that it gives you that mindset and know that you're running a legit business. 
you need to actually get these data to understand what is going on. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there can be like millions of online stores out there, but the ones that really strive or the ones that basically know how to optimize, how to use data and understand the psychology of your customers. And that's where you started to actually shine. So I just want to wrap it up and let you all know that this audio book and the PDF, it's only $2. You can't even buy, I don't even know what you can buy with $2 today. Maybe lollipop, maybe more than that. I don't even know, like for $2. And you're, you're getting a lot of information. You're talking about strategies. And Fred has put it step by step so that you know exactly how you can start a store, how to get your first sale. And he's going to teach you how to use Facebook to drive the targeted people to go to your store and spend money on your store. Now, listen, the long term here is that you're going to make some good money because you're going to make some profits from your store. And that's great. But as I always say, you want to have a business with an exit plan. Now, a lot of you guys who are following me, you know I'm very against affiliate marketing for a lot of newbies. The reason is because there's no exit plan for affiliate marketing. You can't just sell your list like that, especially in a world right now where privacy is such a big deal, right? But this is a business model where you can generally, you can build a list of people or customers that you can keep reselling again. You can be actually opening stores that are very similar. You have a lot of exit plans, a lot of strategies that can combine. Listen, this is insane. I think this is an amazing deal. I, I myself wouldn't sell it for $199. I was asking Fred earlier, I think a, a few days ago, I'm like, dude, why? Why so cheap, man? What's going on? Like he's he's just like you know what? I want to give more value. I want to be able to reach out to people that can't even afford ten dollars, but two dollars will be nothing. Because in my world right now, Fred, you have to understand. Even in Malaysia right now, a lot of people think that two dollars is big. You can't even buy a meal for two dollars, right? So listen, do intermittent fasting. Skip breakfast. Now you have got that two dollars. If you have no money, no more excuses. Go and get this book. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link either below this video or on this video, or on top of this video, somewhere around this video. Get the if you don't have the money, email in. I will buy the damn book for you because I want you to learn. I want you to succeed, right? Because this is really, really a good deal, and uh, you know that you're learning from someone with the experience, not just like talking with a bunch of theories and ideas. He actually know what's going on. He actually know how to create a store that actually is profitable. So, Fred, I want to thank you for the interview today. Um, thank you for sharing a lot of your golden tips, golden nuggets. I love it. And I think a lot of people are going to love it too. And uh, good luck with the book. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me here. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you like more videos like this, watch some of our previous videos here. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notification to our channel because I don't want you to miss out any of our upcoming videos. They are going to be better and better and better. See you in the next video.